Hello guys, welcome to another SOAP UI tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to understand about the REST and REST APIs. So till now we have seen about the SOAP protocol and understood about the SOAP web services and how you can utilize uh, SOAP UI to automate the SOAP uh, web services. Now in this tutorial, we'll understand about the REST uh, so what exactly is REST? So REST stands for Representational State Transfer and REST is not a protocol. REST is an architectural style for the APIs. Okay, so you need to understand that SOAP is a protocol, but REST is an architectural style and it's not a protocol. Uh, the next thing is uh, that REST was defined by Roy Fielding, uh, who is the American uh, computer scientist uh, who has defined REST. Now, when you are or when you are invoking the REST calls or REST APIs, then the key things to notice in the REST call is or REST API is basically these are the four things that you will notice the endpoint, the method. So these are some of the these are the common method uh, get post put and delete these are common um, four method there are more methods which we'll cover as well but uh, these are the common method that are used and the next thing is the resource and the parameters so we'll understand all these four things in the rest api and with an example and try to import a sample api rest api in soap ui and we'll go through all these uh, key things in the rest api call now i'm go not going to go into too much detail of the rest and soap um, you know uh, in in as part of this soap ui tutorial what i'll do is i'll create another tutorial series completely for the api and the web service tutorial which will cover which will deep dive into the details of what SOAP is, how um, how it all, uh, how that protocol works, and then we'll also deep dive into the REST introduction, REST APIs in that particular tutorial. So as part of this tutorial, I'm just touching base uh, on very high level of the REST API introduction and what all is required for you to go ahead and start doing the REST API automation. Now, here is the example that I have took from the Twitter um, API, which is listing the subscriber and we'll understand what exactly uh, is the endpoint methods, resource and parameter. So endpoint is nothing but if uh, if you see this particular example here. Um, so that API dot Twitter dot com, uh, the highlighted portion is the endpoint where you will hit or where the server will hit and the resource is from this um, forward slash uh, till the subscriber is the resource uh, when when we say resource is basically where or what is the resource uh, from where you are fetching the information so in this particular case what we are seeing is we are going to the 1.1 uh, uh, list and then we are getting the subscriber so subscriber.json is the resource from where we are uh, requesting some uh, some information and then after the question mark are all the parameters which will uh, which will basically uh, return the information as per the parameter so depending on what information you are looking for you need to define it in into the parameter list um, and that's all combination of all this uh, if you put it into your uh, browser or in, into the tool like SOAP UI, it will return the appropriate information. Now let's take this particular example and import it in SOAP UI and I'll explain these uh, things there as well. So method we'll see in the SOAP UI. So method is basically get, uh, post, put and delete. So let me import this and I'll explain you the, the method as, as well. So to import it in SOAP UI, you can simply create a new REST project. Just click on this icon here, uh, the REST icon, or you can just click on the file and click on new REST project. All right, either ways, it will open the same new REST project window and will ask for the URI. If you just paste 
that particular URL and click OK. Now it has created the REST project for you. All right. Now you can see all those four things that we discussed method, endpoint, resource, and parameters. Right. So you can see endpoint is basically api.twitter.com, HTTPS api.twitter.com. Resource is any uh, thing in front of that. So 1.1 list subscribers.json and then after the question mark. So you can see in the SOAP UI it basically uh, uh, reads the string and after reading the string it segregates all the key information from that particular string. So it segregated the endpoint, the resource and the parameter so anything starting after the question mark is the parameter in that particular URL and the resource is the resource from which you are querying the particular information so if we see the particular resource is we are if you read this we are kind of looking at for the list of subscribers so list subscriber and you if you provide the particular ID or your Twitter ID here for which you will need um, the, the key uh, and hit this particular request it will list or it will give you the response for the subscriber and in the parameter you are basically providing the list id and the status so let's see i'll go to the twitter developer account and here you can see the api reference contents right so get lists subscriber so this is the api that we have copied so what it is doing is it will give you the list of subscribers. So it will get you the list of subscriber. Uh, it requires the authentication. So you'll need your account information to get the list of subscribers. Now in this resource URL, if you see the highlighted portion here, that's your endpoint. Uh, anything after that forward slash is your resource. And then we are passing the parameters, uh, which is the list of parameters here list id slug um, and it will give you what is required and what is optional in these parameters uh, which you can provide in the parameter list now reading the documentation of any api is very important so as a tester or as a web service tester you need to go through the documentation provided as part of that API and understand what all operations, what all parameters can be passed, which are required or optional, and then design your test cases accordingly uh, with the combination of those required and optional parameters. Uh, now, the next thing is you, you can go through these API reference contents and try to read and understand more details for the API. The next is uh, example I'll take is the google.com. So google.com is whenever you go to google.com and try to search any text. Say for example, you want to search SOAP UI. Okay. It gives you the information of the web search, right? So you'll see all the SOAP UI results on this page. Now, this is your um, endpoint, right? And that's your resource so search you are basically searching for a particular text and then you have the parameters so these are all after question mark is all the parameters and you are querying the text soap ui all right and you are getting all the results so all and then you can filter out based on the images videos news etc right so next example I'll take is the Trivago uh, API, the Fast Connect API. So if you go to the developer.trivago.com, you will get a lot of information about the Trivago Fast Connect and what exactly it does. So whenever you go to these online airline booking websites or the hotel website, you will be able to um, get the information about all the different sort of hotels available worldwide. So you, you choose the location, uh, where you are going and you choose your price range and based on that they filter out all the information so how do they do that so what they do is all these um you know like aggregator website like trivago or airline aggregator website like make my trip um and uh, sky scanner what they do is they provide a standard api so uh, like trivago fast connect is a standard api 
for advertising rates on Trivago, right? So this is the standard API that basically uh, enables the direct connection um, to the booking engine of the hotel, right? So what hotels do is they use the standard API, the Fast Connect API, and provide all the information that is required to the Trivago uh, using that standard API. So and this information is then available to the Trivago Fast Connect and depending on uh, you know like the the live uh, price availability so once that particular information about the hotel room booking prices is provided by the hotel to Trivago and now Trivago has all that information and once you are accessing the Trivago uh, portal or through the mobile app or through the web uh, through the desktop you can search for those live prices for all the advertised hotels on the Trivago website. And then what Trivago does is, so you have a Trivago app, Trivago uh, web portal uh, website, which in turn, uh, there is a API integrated with that app or web portal, which provides all the information based on the criteria that you are looking for say for example you are looking for hotel in a particular date range say from 15 december to 20 december at a particular location then it will list all the hotel prices in that particular location for that date range and that's that is the api that is being utilized by um, mobile app or or website so it's, it's the same API or same uh, web service that fetches all that particular information from Tivago database and displays to you as the end user. So that's pretty much all about the REST API introduction. Uh, in further tutorial, we will start the REST API automation and manual testing using SOAP UI. Hope you like the video. Thank you very much for watching.